We're going to move into second string where we talk all things tech in general. And we also got a couple of stories here. So we're going to try to do this quick fire as you as the previous segment. So the first one I want to start with is uh, YouTube is experimenting with more ways to get in your pocket. So basically what's happening is the users on Reddit and Twitter have noticed that YouTube is asking some viewers to upgrade to premium just to watch videos in 4K resolution. It's not clear if it's just US, if it's just overseas, Eastern region, Western region, it's real random as who's starting to get this feature. Um, but it seems like Apple, uh, YouTube rather, uh, YouTube premium, which most people kind of ignore because we've just gotten used to uh, the ads, which are getting the ads at terrible. the very beginning. Yeah. I mean, ads in YouTube. I mean, if you, if you are not paying attention <laughs> to the video and those ads come on and you don't hit skip, Oh, it's a wrap. You're going to be yeah. watching commercials for a minute. So much. So I'd be like, wait a minute, I'm watching YouTube. I ain't even watching TV. Cause you're so yeah. trained when you're watching TV to just sit through the ads mm -hmm. to where if you're watching YouTube, you also got to sit through the ads. So a lot of at people, least those first, what five, 10 seconds. So you can yeah, man. Get flip to skip ads. So you can click it really quickly. Right, right, right. So uh, a lot of people suffer through that and really don't get YouTube premium because the, the main draw to you. Yeah. The main draw to YouTube premium is there's no ads that rumor is that may even be changing anytime soon. But I guess YouTube is right. We need to figure out how to get more people into YouTube premium. They have become numb to the ads. So <laughs> um, let's give them the let's only give them way low to watch. Quality abilities. Yeah, let's give them, yeah, let's give them not really low quality. But if you've got, for instance, these lower quality. Uh, right, right. My um, uh, M1 MacBook Pro does better than does way more than 4K if I'm just watching it on the screen. Mm -hmm. And so I don't even have to buy extra special TV. I don't need no extra special cables, which most people probably watch YouTube either on their laptop or on their phone, which mm -hmm. those are damn near 4K, yeah. if not better. Right. So the fact that YouTube is trying to do this means there's a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, that's going to be affected if they decide to do this, um, if they decide to do it, if they do then there's a lot of people going to be making some decisions. Maybe some people don't care, but if you are one of those kids, like a college kid, that their only TV is a laptop, mm -hmm. you mean to tell me they can't get the best quality YouTube videos, which was most college kids probably end up watching anyway. The fact that they can't get 4K without paying for it, I don't know if that's going to work, but mm -hmm. time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think they're going to lose some people or people are just going to suffer through it because, again, it's, you know, 12 bucks a month it may not seem that much, but over year after year, it does, you know, kind of all up. the other subscriptions that you have <laughs> people every are plus in right. ad and all that. Mm -hmm. Oof, mm -hmm. It's exhausting. Yeah, speaking of I'm ads, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> speaking of ads, <laughs> more ads are coming to Instagram. <laughs> um, basically, um, now Instagram says businesses can put ads on the Explore homepage, which is the grid of photos and videos you land on when you first open the tab. So basically what you do is if you open up Instagram and you're trying to, I don't know, you're doing a search for something or you just want to find somebody new to follow something interesting. You're getting bored with your feed. You know, mm -hmm. if you click on the Explore tab based on the people you follow, based on things you've liked, based on the web, the uh, videos and pictures you commented on. Instagram gives you all these suggestions. Well, in that su suggestions there, uh, you, Instagram is saying now you can see ads in those suggestions. So the, worst. <laughs> the absolute, it's so bad on the regular feed. Yeah, now they want to put ads in those teeny tiny boxes. You really, to me, I have to have a strategy when I go on Instagram, I watch my stories first uh -huh. and then I close out of that. And then I flip to my following because uh -huh. it's just, You'll see a post from someone you know, and the next three things are ads. And the next three things are suggestions because you may have slowed down and mm -hmm. watched something, or you could have been scrolling and stopped to look at something else, and it stopped on this one thing you didn't even intend to stop on. Now you see because you watched X Y Z. Here's X Y Z. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> 
So get ready. Again, uh, the only way these companies, the only way these companies can make money is if they serve you ads. And we've got to decide whether or not we want to deal with it. You know, are we willing to pay for Instagram in order to get rid of ads? But obviously that doesn't work because the previous story that we talked about with YouTube, if you pay for YouTube premium, there's a rumor out there. I don't have it, but there's a rumor out there that YouTube, you'll still see ads in YouTube premium. See? There just won't be as many. So it's almost like paying for a service to say, I don't want to see ads. Uh, you're going to end up seeing ads anyway. So it's almost like these companies are There's not no going to stop. It. They're going to, they're no going to keep pushing it. it. They're going to keep pushing this envelope. They're going to keep pushing the, 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 like a kid, like a child. They keep testing those limits, testing those limits, testing those limits. And if you don't draw a lot hard line in the stand, in the sand, before you know it, Instagram won't be, you're paying it won't for be premium, enjoyable but anymore. you still got ads. <laughs> it's yeah, like, exactly. what am I paying for then? And well, maybe that's the change. You're paying for high quality videos. But you're going to get these ads. Yeah, right. Anyway, right. You're going to get these ads no matter how much it costs. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. All right. So the next story, uh, Zelle fraud is on the rise and it looks like banks do not care. For those who don't know, Zelle is one of those super popular mobile payment services that links to your bank. So I use it all the time when I'm paying for uh, home repair, home remodeling, home improvement services. Most of the contractors most of the people to come out and do work typically take Zelle. So I use it all the time. Of course, <laughs> I got money in a bank, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about trying to defraud anybody. But it seems like um, Zelle fraud is on the rise. Right. So Elizabeth Warren, uh, Elizabeth Warren, um, she you know, she's one of the few uh, politicians that really like um, does work when it comes to people's money and people's security, you know, so she's, and she's a progressive in the true sense of the word. Right, right, right. So she jumped in, got the word that um, she she did a report that according to uh, her analysis of data shared by U.S. Bank, PNC, Bank of America and Truist Bank, these four banks alone are on pace to receive scam and fraud claims in excess of two hundred and fifty two hundred fifty five million in 2022 a dramatic spike yeah a dramatic spike compared to 90 million in 2020 so in the course of two years it went up over triple fold triple fold yeah. almost in the course of uh, just two years of course that was alarming so uh senator elizabeth warren launched an investigation she demanded data from all seven of the big banks jp morgan chase wells fargo U.S. Bank, PNC, Capital One, Bank of America, and Truist. Only the four banks that I mentioned below comp complied. However, Warren's report released this week shows that even half of the data she sought was enough to show that fraud is growing on Zelle and the banks are not refunding the vast majority of defrauded customers, breaking their promises to their customers and potentially violating federal law. So what makes Zelle different than Cash App what makes it different than Venmo, what makes it different than PayPal, what makes it different than Apple Cash is Zelle links directly to your bank. And what I mean by that is you can link Cash App, you can link Venmo, but the only way to use Zelle is it's through your, your mobile, app. right, your mobile banking app. That's the only way to use it versus Cash App. I can I can use they have that their own app. Yeah, right, right. I can link that to any bank account. I can link it to mm -hmm. a credit card, credit card. I can link it to a debit card, whatever. With um, Zelle, those are through the banks. So you would think you would assume that if you do business through Zelle, that's tied to your bank, that if there is some fraud or something happens, you would think that you would be a little bit more protected. According to this analysis, the banks do not care. And they really ain't trying to work with you, ain't trying to refund your money. So be on the lookout, be careful out there. And the reason why I brought this story up was I am selling some stuff on um, Facebook marketplace. Terrible idea. <laughs> Number one, because it seems like all of these people are trying to scam you by using these cash apps, these Zelle uh, payments just specifically like specifically to me I listed something on Facebook marketplace somebody responded they said how's the quality I said oh it's it's 
hardly been used. I've taken good care of it. The features is this and that and this and that. Sent them extra pictures. Did this whole back and forth for what you would think a online transaction would be. Towards the end, when it's time to make some money, the dude says, oh, I'm out of town for two weeks. Let me send you the money now so you can mark it as sold. And then my son will come pick it up a day later. Automatically red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. (laughs) Number one, I said in the listing I only do in-person payments via mobile because I did say you can use Zelle, you can use Cash App, but in person, I need mm-hmm. to be sitting there with you as when you take you out your phone. When yeah. you make the transaction, I approve it. I give you the product. We go about our business, right? If you're sending me the money now, I don't know what's up with that. Number right. two, number two, why are you sending me the money and then your son comes to pick up the product? Well, why don't you give your be- son? Why don't you give your son the money and then come pick it up? Red flags, red flags. I was like, nope, yeah. not trying to do it. But ima- no, I can imagine, you. I can imagine somebody that don't have the is not a cynic, like acumen. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm a cynic, but I'll take acumen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust <laughs> nobody. <laughs> so somebody who this seems like on the up and up is like, oh, they're out of town, and he mentioned my army son. That wanted me mm-hmm. to believe, oh, he's trustworthy. He's safe. Mm-hmm. I don't care if your son's a crackhead. If he comes with the money, I'm giving him the, the thing, right? So yeah. you trying to convince me that this is a trustworthy deal, just my spidey senses flare up, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the point I was trying to get at, anybody on average would be like, oh, this is a pretty good transaction. The guy's out of town. He's sending his son. He's using Zelle and Cash App. I've used those before. I've done transactions all the time. Mm -hmm. What possibly could go wrong? Well, a lot of things could go wrong. And according to this story, the banks ain't going to help you if something does go wrong. So no, when you go to like send it, they they're like, they tell you like three times, double check. This is the right person. This is who you want to send it to. And I remember when Zelle first came out because I primary bank with Wells Fargo. Um, (laughs) It was only a Zelle I mean, Zelle was only a Wells Fargo app. Then it extended, you know, to all the banks. And so even with friends that I know that I know, been to their house, they've been to mine, we travel, all that stuff together. When I add them to Zelle to make sure it's them, I do my own like little safety check. I send them like a small amount. It was like, did you get it? And how much was it? I was like, okay, I got it. It was X, Y, Z. And it's like, okay, cool. Then this is the right person I'll send it on the rest of the amount and we can go on about our business because it's so easy. I was about to send a friend some money for a trip we were going on. They paid for, and I know her, her name, but her, she goes by her middle name and she has a different first name. And when I typed in the first name, I know her as, and last name, someone came up and I was like, Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But then I remember seeing an email on the trip stuff that it was a different first name. She was like, yeah, my first name is XYZ. And so I almost sent the money to to another person, person, to the wrong person. And I ain't giving it back, Jack. (laughs) I did. I was like, I had um, a while back, I got my my driveway pressure washed and I sent the money to the guy and he texted me back. He was like, yeah, I never got it. And I sent him because when I typed in the the address on cash app i was like is this yours and he was like yeah he must not have really paid attention to it i sent to mm. some knucklehead kid and i was like oh yeah so i sent this to you by mistake and he was like too bad it's my 75 dollars now oh, i buddy. was like you're a broke boy then he blocked me so of you course, know i course. was like you know i try not to use cash app unless i cash app you before and i right. know that it's yours so um, one tip that you said was really, really good, regardless of who you send money to, send a small amount, verify that they got it, and then send them the regular amount. Mm-hmm. Another thing you can do, I don't know if you can do this with Zelle, but with Cash App and with Venmo, I think they have barcodes. You can show some if you're somebody face to face. Right, right. A QR code. You can you, even text you, it. I've had people text me their QR codes before. Right, right, right. So that way you know that this is the person because mm-hmm. on their phone, you can actually almost like a, 
uh, uh, tap to pay, payment to payment mm-hmm. type thing to where they put their QR code on the phone. You scan it with your phone in the cash app and then boom, that's how you know some you're sending somebody the uh, right amount of money. So right. Take these, take these t- tips, take them seriously. Because again, like I said, you ain't getting your money back. Not getting Even, it back. It's gone. The, peop- the people ain't going to give it back. I don't think. The bank's I not would... giving it back. These banks are not about to give $255 million back to people. Man, get out of here. Mm-mm. Nope, nope. It's like, it's and gone now. Oh, well. I, I want to believe. <laughs> I want <laughs> to believe that if somebody sent me some money by mistake that I would give it back. I want to mm-hmm. believe that. I really want to believe that. <laughs> but when the time happens, let's just say I don't ever want to be faced in that situation because depending on how much it is, shoot, I might be like, I don't know what to tell you. Don't hate the play. I hate the game. Sorry, dog. <laughs> I want to believe. I want to believe I'm a better person, but I don't know. Shrugs. Shrug. <laughs> Speak, speaking of better people, uh, Elon is back in the news and it looks like he is back on track to buy Twitter. You know, of course, he said he was going to buy it for a certain dollar amount. Uh, the price changed. He tried to come up with all these 50 million reasons why he didn't want to go through the deal. Twitter was like, no, you need to go through the deal. They was going to take him to court and right up until the moment to where they were going to go to court. It looks like. Um, Elon reneged on his renege <laughs> and said, okay, all right, all right, all right. I will buy Twitter at the price of $44 billion. Now, still don't trust it. Yeah. Um, um, I thought I read something. So I put this story in the, um, notes for earlier this week. I thought I saw something to where something else was on there about him saying that. What did he say? Because I think I saw it. I think I saw it well, actually on Twitter. Well, while you um, while you looked up, according to CNN, like I was mentioning, I put this in the show notes earlier this week. Um, I'm looking at a story right now on CNN business to where the Twitter Musk trial, the Twitter Musk trial is now on pause. So basically. I think he uh, didn't seemed, stop the trial. Right. I was I was just gonna say he's stalling, it sounds like, because um the trial that Twitter was going to <laughs> pretty much say in the clause to where if this deal don't go through, you owe us like a couple billion. I don't remember the a- actual number, but uh according to this, uh Twitter has opposed Twitter has opposed Musk's, Musk's motion to stay the proceedings and raise concerns that he might not follow through on his word to quickly close the deal. Because what I've read was he could close the deal as early as this week. If you're listening to us on Friday, um, Twitter could very well be owned by Musk, but uh, yeah. Twitter is saying, eh, we don't, we don't trust it. <laughs> we don't trust it. And they're saying if the transaction does not close by 5 PM on October 28th, which is a couple of weeks from now, the parties are instructed to contact me by email that evening to obtain November 2022 trial dates. The judge, uh, judge in Delaware, Tr- Chancellor Kathleen St. Judge McCormick said. So basically mm-hmm. she said, all right, you got a little bit more time. I'm giving you to the end of this week, end of this but month. The clock is ticking. But the clock is and ticking. if you don't oh. go through with it, we go into trial. And I think. He's trying to avoid the trial because I think that opens him up even more to -hmm. people getting into his other business dealings as a part of discovery or, you know, whatever else he got shadily possibly going on on the side. It may Mm -hmm. be him saying, dang, it might be cheaper to keep her, as they say. It may be cheaper just to go ahead and go through with this um, rather than, you know, open up the the larger can of, of BS. So either way, I don't think this is good. I don't yes. think it's good either way. So yeah, so from what I can read real fast, um Elon says, All right, I'll buy it at fifty four dollars and twenty cents a share. And so but y'all need to stop the court proceedings. Twitter was like, eh, it ain't that easy. You know, bait and switcher. Still, yeah, we <laughs> we don't trust you, number one. <laughs> 
<laughs> and number two, we haven't had any contractual agreements yet. So all mm-hmm. right now we got is your word and your word don't amount to nothing right now. It don't but mean right. But uh, Musk was able to stall. So the court proceedings was supposed to have started but he's got a little bit more time to figure out what he's going to do. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, There's still no heavy over or under whether or not he's going to buy Twitter or not. There was some text messages about him talking to some other people. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't uh, get into the details of that. You can expound if you know, but it seemed like the, he was trying to get his boys together. So I don't know what was going on. So, he was talking to some shady characters. Uh, I know there were some conversations going back and forth with him and um, Jack. Um, what's the what's the crazy white wing guy? Was Peter it Sean Field? Hannity? It was no. one of those Fox News people that was in the text chain too. Um, oh no, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was some really people that were like, "Dang, you in?" I think it said to me. Um, it said more about the people that were in the text than it did with Elon, because I'm like, Mm -hmm. you are wrapped up in this because Mm -hmm. it was, I'm trying to see, it was several other billionaires that were talking to him. I'm trying to find the, see if I can find the, some of the text real quick, but I know it was. I don't know if it was, it was one of the Fox News guys for sure. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. know it was Jack who was the, ori- yeah, mm-hmm. the original Twitter guy. Um, Joe oh, Joe Rogan was the other one mm-hmm. that I was like, yikesy. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Larry, Larry Ellis, Ellison, Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle. Um, A crypto who? billionaire, Sam Bank Fry. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he'll be there, so. Yeah, you Let's say Ellison. See. Yeah. Yeah. So so basically, uh, I don't know if they was trying. I don't know what was going on these text messages, but basically they were saying, you know, be careful of the company you keep. And some of these guys are, for lack of a better term, some sleaze balls. So mm-hmm. it kind of <laughs> kind of, you know, paints a picture as to people with the most money, you know, it. It was a very ick factor. And I was reading some yeah. of them and I was like, Mm-mm, close, close, close. I don't need to read no more of this. Cause this All is, right. Mm. Yeah, we shall see. Uh, the, the Twitter story moves on. 